Now, I'm sure we'll be discussing more lefties losing it with my next guest. I'm absolutely thrilled to have Dr. Sebastian Gorka. He's a former deputy assistant to Donald Trump and the host of America First with Sebastian Gorka. Um, welcome back to the program, Dr. Gorka. You were in that courtroom uh, for this uh, hush money trial. You wrote a fantastic piece about it on your Substack. Um, and it really was a trial with an unashamedly partisan judge brought by a prosecutor. He got into office on a Get Trump campaign. Uh, and you wrote of what you saw. You, you were in that courtroom and you wrote of uh, Judge Merchan's bias uh, in a back and forth lasting for hours with scores of requests from either side. Merchan accepted every demand from Alvin Bragg's team, the prosecutor, and none from the defence. At one point, he even said to the president's attorney as he was standing up and preparing to make a point, sit down, I don't want to hear from you again. <laughs> Do you think this, this is why we didn't have cameras in that courtroom? A a an attempt to hide from the public just what a hit job this was? Oh, utterly. I mean, as uh, the former Attorney General who was with me, uh, with the President, Matt Whitaker, said when we had our press conference outside, he said the judge should be wearing the jersey of the prosecution. This was a stitch-up. This was a hatchet job. I mean, look at the fact that the, the person prosecuting for Alvin Bragg, who, as you say, campaigned, because we have this weird thing where we have prosecutors who are elected to office, campaigned on putting President Trump in prison, a man who, by the way, was also funded by George Soros in that campaign. And then mm. who's his line prosecutor in the case? Now, this is where it gets really fascinating. Matthew Colangelo. Who's Matthew Colangelo? Well, he parachuted in from the stinking swamp that is Washington, D.C., where he was the number three, the third most senior law enforcement officer yes. in Biden's Department of Justice. Never before in the history of federal law enforcement is, does the third highest ranking official mm. in the Federal Department of Justice just magically fall all the way down the snakes and ladders to become a line prosecutor in a local court in New York. Why did he take that massive pay cut? Because he's doing the bidding of Joe Biden in that courtroom. The whole thing was a farrago. Look, the way to understand this... And President Trump even quoted my, my Substack article today on, on his Truth Social feed, mm. is that this is how they want to steal the election before the first ballot is even cast. They know President Trump is going to win. Why? New Jersey. New Jersey is a Democrat state. President Trump goes there and a mm. hundred thousand working class minority Americans go to see President Trump. Biden is toast if we have a free and fair election. That's why they want to put President Trump in prison on uh, July uh, 11. Uh, the, you talked about the, the third uh, ranking Justice Department uh, dude coming down to this uh, local court to be a prosecutor. I mean, how do we have a local court in Manhattan prosecuting federal election crimes. I mean, <laughs> yeah. on the face of it, it seems so absurd. We've had so many legal experts talk about the uh, massive inconsistencies and just extraordinary things they have seen in this trial. And yet there was a poll out today showing that around 53% of Americans think this was a fair trial. How can that be? Well, because they listen to propaganda whores like CNN and the Washington Post. I mean, that's why. I mean, even even your Chiron and your introduction is a, a talking point for the mainstream lying legacy media. Hush money trial. It's not a hush money trial. It's a mm. non-disclosure agreement. I signed a non-disclosure agreement with Mr. Trump in 2015 when I came on board to be his national security advisor for the debates. An NDA is a completely standard business practice in Australia, in the UK, in, a, in America. And this is a what? It's a fabricated crime. The statute of limitations mm. expired five years ago for what they charged him with, which is what? A misstatement on a financial internal document. 
where he said, this is legal fees. Mm -hmm. Well, it was because he was paying his lawyer. And then they come up with this Rube yeah. Goldberg lunatic thing that, well, the, um, the, the hush money so-called payment was made to protect the president's reputation during an election. Therefore, it should have been paid for from the campaign fund. But here, here's where it gets bizarre. When was that payment to the president's lawyer made? This is an important point. January mm. after the election. How can you undermine an election three months after the election occurred, unless the check went into, you know, H.G. Wells's time machine and went back in time? The whole thing is a fabrication. Oh, and your, your other point is completely well taken. It's a federal election. So what is a, a state court in New York doing trying to prosecute a federal election allegation? The Federal Election Commission deemed there to be no crime. Alvin Bragg's predecessor in New York, Cy Vance Jr., said, yeah, sorry, no crime here. Oh, but President Trump becomes the nominee for the Republicans. He's beating Joe Biden in six of the six battleground states. Ah, uh, now we're going to charge him with a trumped-up felony. Everybody sees through this who's... Uh, awake, has her eyes open, and has a pulse. Now, you were in court. You know President Trump. Did he appear rattled at any point when those uh, verdicts came through and the 34 guilties? Did you sense that uh, he felt fear or despair? <laughs> this man is, is quite remarkable. I've, I've never seen him show fear since I've known him since, what, 2015. Look, he said something quite moving that day. Uh, he said that I am prepared to go to prison because the U.S. Constitution is more important than my liberty. What, what, what person says that? I mean, let alone what politician. He says, I'm doing this for all of you. It's not about me. And he's right. I mean, Donald Trump, without any question, is the most famous man in the world. He's a billionaire. He's a person who's escorted 24 hours a day, seven days a week, by Secret Service agents carrying fully automatic weapons. Uh, that man is very clear about one thing. If they can do it to him, they can do it to any American. And that's why he will never ever stop. And as he said last Thursday, standing in that dingy corridor under that neon lighting, the real verdict will be on November the 5th when the American people speak. Well, this lawfare, there are now uh, debates happening amongst conservatives. Some say Republicans must take the high road. They can't play these dirty games that the Democrats have played. And others say, no, this is the only way to deal with this strategy is to throw it back at them. And there's suggestions if you want to talk about election interference. What about that letter that was signed by 51 national security experts? Where did that letter originate from? Who had a hand in crafting it? Those 51 security experts who claimed that Hunter Biden's laptop and all the information contained within it about the Biden family was Russian disinformation. That came out right before the 2020 election to discredit yeah. that New York Post story. And you could argue very easily that was a clear case of election interference. Did the likes of the Biden campaign, Joe Biden, Anthony Blinken, did they have any hand in, in uh, spreading that message? Uh, do you think that's going to happen? Do you think the Republicans are going to go after Joe Biden, go after Hillary Clinton and, and other Democrats as they've gone against their ideological opponents? Well, first things first, we, we know who orchestrated that. It is Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, and Mike Morrell. Mike Morrell has confessed on the you know, testimony in front of the House of Representatives as acting director of the CIA, which should be a completely non-political position. He orchestrated the signatures of those 51 former CIA directors and intelligence officers to lie about the Hunter Biden laptop, which we now know is true. The photographs, the video, the, the prostitutes, the guns, the cocaine, it's all real. And they said, oh, this is 
This is a Russian disinformation. That's the acting director of the CIA. That is the definition of the deep state. Now, what are the Republicans going to do? Now, first things first, they're not going to go after their political ideological opponents because then we sink to the gutter of those who believe that the state is there as a political weapon. What we must go after, not politically, but in the terms of justice, is those who have committed crimes. If you worked in the Trump administration and leaked secret documents to the Washington Post, to the CNN, you committed a felony. If you're Jim Comey, former director of the FBI, if you're uh, J James uh, Clapper, you're John Brennan, director of the DIA and the CIA, you affected the illegal surveillance of a presidential candidate. It's Operation Crossfire Hurricane. You use the most powerful intelligence agencies in the world as a political tool. You must be charged with abuse of power, and you must stand in a dock and answer for your crimes and be judged by a jury of your peers. So you know, unless we restore faith in our institutions, I mean, the biggest, you know, President Trump is doing great. He's raised $200 million in the last 72 hours. I mean, that never before seen since the verdict. But, but, but God willing, if we have a free and fair election, he will be reelected and he will be the president, whether he's convicted or not. But the bigger problem is this, Rita. On Thursday, tens of millions of Americans lost complete and utter faith in the judicial system and the organs of the state that have the power to imprison. That takes much longer than one election to fix. Tens of millions of Americans say, hang on a second, the FBI, the DOJ, the state of New York, if they don't like my face, if they don't like my politics, they can put me in prison for years. That's the real damage done to the republic, and that has been done by the Democrats.